Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions, my name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called Quantum Rush. This is a closed beta of an upcoming futuristic sci-fi racing game featuring what, in my estimation, would probably be something very similar to the idea behind Star Wars Pod Racer meets F-Zero X meets Wipeout. It's, it's sort of in that realm uh, where we're doing the whole racing and combat, but also there's some options for just racing or just combat and there's good customization. Pretty nice graphics, and in general, it seems like there's quite a bit of promise to this one. So I figured let's go through a couple of rounds, and I'll show off some of the tracks and show off some of the features, and you guys can make up your mind what this looks like something you might be interested in. And if you are, uh, you might be able to get in and play in the closed beta right now. Uh, so anyway, let's look at some of the options here. We've got in the main menu settings, we'll go to graphics. You can see uh, we can set up our resolution, full screen, windowed, texture quality, uh, we've got filtering options, we've got shadow resolution options, quality. This is quite a few uh, pretty detailed options here, which you don't often see quite to this degree. So I am kind of happy about all of that. You can definitely make it look, well, pretty nice. Uh, I have to be honest, there's a, a little bit of a sort of hit or miss in the art style, in my opinion. But I'll show you, there's some really nice things to it as well. Uh, and the audio sliders, we've got all of the audio sliders you could ever want. Uh, they're all very well represented here. So then... Keyboard bindings and gamepad bindings are also completely uh, changeable and customizable, so that's always a big plus in my opinion. And there's actually a tutorial to get you started. The game is not super hard to figure out or anything, but I feel like the tutorial kind of takes it uh, very slowly, one step at a time. I think, honestly, the best way the tutorial could have done it is just to kind of give you a race to go on and just, like, do one lap, and during the course of that lap, stop you every now and then and ask you to try something. Uh, and if you get it, it'll be like, hey, good job. And if you don't get it, it'll be like, hey, try it again. But instead, it just kind of gives you these little objective-based things, which if you fail, you might have been like, hey, I didn't really know what you were asking me there because the text was kind of small and I wasn't paying that close attention. It's a really nitpicky thing, but tutorials can be kind of funny like that. Uh, so the general sentiment here is you want to play this online. You want to have some friends to play with, hopefully. And right now, since this is in closed beta, there's no one to play with, unfortunately. So all I'm going to be able to show you is some practice mode uh, stuff, but you can also customize your racer to some degree. I kind of found this sweet little setup with this uh, kind of looks like a spider web design going over. And we can pick colors. Uh, a lot of this stuff is for purchase, and it sort of makes me worry a little, and I hope this doesn't end up being coming. Uh, one of those types of things where you have to, like, buy everything in the actual application for real money or something, because, well, the in-game currency... Seems like they don't give you a lot of options to start anyway, and, you know, I'm being overly cynical, it's not necessarily what's gonna happen, but... Uh, as you can see here, if I wanted to buy these colors, they cost 2,000 credits, uh, although... Also over here, these are two, so I'm not really sure why some are more expensive than others. Could just be a beta thing, I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, I was able to make the ship look somewhat cool, and there was a couple different ships to pick from, different designs and such. Uh, we'll go back. What is this again? Show this racer's configuration page. There you go. You can see my configuration page. And I can buy this configuration page for three credits. I don't know what that means. Um, so let's go back. It's kind of funny, like, the back button seems like it gets out of the way occasionally, and I kind of lose track of it. Uh, there's this ship and this ship, and then we can buy more slots, so presumably there's more ships to unlock later. And right now it doesn't have a ton of tracks, but the ones that are here look pretty sweet. As you can see, there's Death Race, Speed Race, Practice Mode, and Arena. I haven't unlocked Arena Mode. Not really sure how you unlock Arena Mode, but I'm only like 15 minutes into playing this, so it's not too big of a deal. Uh, Clipper, the Aruga, and Kite are my three ship options. I'm picking the Clipper, because that's the one that I've customized. And let's go to Solar Storm Coast, because I remember that one was kind of sweet. So I'll start practice and give it a little drive around, and I'll kind of go over the controls as we do our driving. It's not as complicated as this keyboard layout would make it look, I would say. Uh, but yeah, let's give it a shot. So this is a level that's sort of set in a beach area, but it kind of goes in and out of beach stuff, and that was, of course, me accidentally holding down the right trigger, uh, which actually is what activates your air spoiler things, uh, which are your brakes. So you can brake in one direction or the other. Uh, I'm holding down A to accelerate. It's not that big of a thing. I think you'll figure out how to do that pretty quickly. But I can also press X for a turbo. You'll see there's an overheat meter in the top left. I want to try and mitigate that as much as possible, and it will dissipate after a while of driving. 
Uh, you've got three power-ups that are available in the top middle as well as some armor. And this is where things get kind of cool. We can actually drive around on the ceiling and stuff like that. Uh, and we can use our right bumper for a blaster and left bumper to use up one of these power-ups. And I also want to try and hit those charge pads as often as possible. That's a magnetic track. Those will appear every now and then. Uh, those will allow me to stick to certain surfaces, which is kind of sweet. Uh, in this case, we don't really have to worry. We can just drive wherever we want. I guess the green might denotate or demarcate that. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how I always know I'm able to drive on a certain surface, but... And we end up out in the beach area, and that's always nice. we got some lovely graphics to show off here, some reflective and pretty-looking water. And I don't ever feel like I get lost on the tracks, which is always really nice. That's a thing I think I've had pro problems with in a lot of these sci-fi racers. Uh, it's kind of hard to read them sometimes at face value. This game, yeah, no real problems there. So level design's looking pretty good. I have tried three different tracks now. All of them had something unique and kind of cool about them. Uh, but I think the one major thing that stands out, in my opinion, and this could just be due to the fact that this is still in beta, uh, but I have some maybe woes about that the art style might come across a little bit generic at times. Also, the ship tends to have a little bit more detail than the environment. There's a lot of you know, reflectivity, shader effects, and things happening on the ship that in the environment, they just seem a little bit dull sometimes. Uh, there's sort of a distinct lack of contrast in a lot of areas, and it's very pretty. I mean, looking off into the distance, everything looks fine. I can't really fault them for any one specific thing, uh, but there's just something about it that just seems like a little bit dull. Like, maybe if things were just a little bit more shadowy or a little bit darker in certain places, it gives you sort of a better sense of depth. But again, when we're trying to focus on the fact that we really want to have a good experience for racing first and foremost, kind of graphics come second, really. You want to be able to see what you're doing, try and navigate the environment as best as possible, and in that case, I just don't really care as much. The other thing is we also haven't been playing with a bunch of other racers at the same time, and you absolutely don't want to obfuscate them. And I'm not sure quite how hard it is to see the other racers when we're driving, like how uh, the perspective feels, how the... Uh, ability to parse them moving around you at any given moment feels so you know it might just be that these decisions were made to make sure that the player is the best experience with regard to uh, being able to handle combat uh, because that is obviously a pretty large part of things but I just feel like it's very it's close to something really cool and I'm not trying to fault them and I'm not trying to be negative for the sake of being negative or anything I just there's just something a little bit just shy of where I think it should be uh, to really hit that super polished, really ultra pretty looking experience, and it's just, it's so close, I just want to see them hit it, is all it is. Um, I should probably mention, I have quite a fondness for this genre. I haven't really talked a lot about this genre because I don't find very many opportunities to. Unfortunately, this isn't really a thing that gets well represented in indie games, and in this particular case, I feel like this game could be onto something very cool here. Uh, one thing that might be a little bit prohibitive, and this again could just be due to the fact this is in closed beta, uh, but there is a client download and then you have to make an account and then you have to update and download and update and download and update and download and then you finally get dropped in the game and instead of just being able to play you have to do a tutorial and then you have to explore the UI and then you have to figure out what to do. So there's a lot of barriers to entry before you can just get in and play the game and I came very close on a couple of occasions to just not covering this game today because it seemed like I was probably not going to get to actually play it anytime soon. And then once I got into it, I was worried that I was going to have to buy some currency or unlock currency to be able to show off any of the features. So it's not that they necessarily did anything really wrong, but it would be nice if there was a lower barrier to entry. Uh, and it would be nice if perhaps you could just get in and play this without an account. Uh, and since there's a practice mode, you don't even necessarily need to be playing online. Uh, and it would be great if there was, like, a single-player campaign as well to be able to show off, but, you know, there isn't, as far as I can tell. And I don't know if there maybe will be later, but I, that's something I want to follow and check for later on. So we'll do one more practice race here to show off another track, uh, since, you know, this is kind of a good way to uh, give an indication of what you might be interested in here. I, you know, I could have done the tutorial as well, but I think that probably would have just slowed us down, honestly. Uh, and I'm very, I'm curious to know if, uh, the, my friends that I hang out with online, the people that I play games with generally would be interested in maybe playing this with me, because I would be interested to see in how this, uh, goes exactly in the multiplayer experience, since I have a feeling this is predominantly where you're going to get the majority of your enjoyment out of things. So again, I'm going to be looking at possibly continuing the idea of, is the green theme, those little green rib, uh, rivlets, or whatever the word is, ribbons, I guess, that run through the level, uh, are those indicating that I can go on any surface? Because right now it feels like I can just do it in general all the time. 
but at the very beginning I did notice that there were those uh, little shader effects happening. So this is very Star Wars Pod Racer, I would say. Uh, I'm kind of getting the impression maybe, am I somehow allowed to get onto that core part in the center? Because it looked like there was a magnetic strip there that maybe I could ride on. Uh, there's not a lot in the way of danger in terms of like falling out of the track or anything in the few levels that I've gotten to try. Uh, so I don't really have that to worry about, but I do think that really the emphasis again is going to be here on combat, not so much on course navigation, because right now I've had very little trouble just going full blast everywhere I go. And granted, I haven't been hitting all the booster pads, there's certainly a lot of optimization that I could be doing, uh, but you know, it, it's not so much about navigation as it is about just shooting your opponents and trying to get ahead of them as far as I can tell. So this is a case where like this tunnel in particular right here just looks a little bit drab. I mean, they've got all of the sci-fi conventions going on. There's lots of pretty lights and lots of neon things, and in this case, there's some cool depth going on where there's some, like, I guess those are buildings off in the distance. I saw at one point there was, like, a train passing by underneath me, which was kind of a neat effect. Uh, but, yeah, in general, there's just moments where you, you vacillate quite drastically between things looking very, very pretty, and, ah, that's how I get on there. Okay, so those pads flip me over. And I totally ran into that. By most accounts, I would have expected if I hit one of those turny things that I would have probably destroyed my ship. Oh, well, okay. I fell out of the course there. Close beta, folks. No worries. Uh, I believe I'm on fire now. And not in a good NBA Jam type way, either. Um, I should also have tried the keyboard controls a little bit. So right now, since I'm using the 360 controller, I haven't had any issues. The controls feel fine to me. I wonder if it'll feel quite as good uh, using keyboard and mouse, as it were. I have a feeling you'll probably want to use uh, the 360 controller if you have the option, but, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments if you did try the other stuff. I should also mention, like, there's a pretty good diversity of weapons. I just, I haven't had any reason to use them, obviously, since uh, we've actually just been focused on just racing through these courses and showing them off. Uh, this one that I have selected right now is a homing missile. If I hold down left bumper, it would actually lock on to whatever target was in front of me, and provided I can stay on course with them for long enough, uh, they will actually be targeted, and the, you know, missile will be shot at them. Hopefully, if it connects, that'll eliminate them. There's also shields you can employ to try and deflect them, too, so... You know, there's a little bit of give and take in the combat, from what I can tell, and it does seem like it'll be a lot of fun to try. Uh, I would kind of hope that maybe some of the courses might be a little bit more extreme later on, as we get into some more strategic play, uh, because I have a feeling, you know, just the combat is fun, but if you're only playing the racing-only modes, uh, you're probably not going to get as much out of it. And especially without a single-player uh, campaign, I think probably the impetus to try and race over and over again might wear out after just a short amount of time. What I would expect to have happen here, and this is kind of just the general way that I play a lot of these types of games, I would play single-player for a while, try and unlock some currency uh, in a somewhat easier fashion, and then I would use that to customize my ship or do something that makes me feel like I'm sort of more of a unique individual before I take things online. And then whatever I do, I'll be trying to uh, largely play for leaderboard or just bragging rights when I play online, not so much for score progression or game progression. But that's just me. I mean, feel free to weigh in on any of these points, please, in the comments. I want to know what you have to say about this. Uh, in general, polish is pretty well done on Quantum Rush. I have... A lot of positive things to say, I just feel like I've kind of harped on some of the negative things because I just feel it's so close to being like a really cool, really interesting thing that is needed in this space. Uh, there just aren't a lot of options, like I've said, so I guess take that with what you will. Uh, if you're interested in Quantum Rush, go ahead and click the link in the description. Uh, see if you can get into the closed beta. I'm not sure if it's just free to get in at this point. There was a thing on the, uh, what was it, the IndieDB page that I found that looked like it said it was valid for 100 registrations, like a token, but I was never prompted for the token, so when I went into the game, I could just join up. So feel free to go try it. Uh, it only takes, well, provided you have a good internet uh, setup, I, it took me about 10 or 15 minutes to go from starting the download process to actually being in the game. So if you got something else to do, maybe play some Clicker Heroes in the background, get started, and try it out. I'm hoping they streamline the process for the full release, and I believe they actually got set up for Steam Early Access, so it's looking like this is probably going to make waves in that front as well. So provided we can get some Steam integration on things, uh, that would really help a lot. Like, no client, no downloads, no uh, creating an account, just get right into the game and play with your friends. That would be perfect, and I think that would really suit things very, very well uh, for Quantum Rush. So... 
Let me know what you think. Give it a download. Give it a try. Maybe get in here and play with uh, me if I do end up doing a day of this on stream or something. I think that could be quite a bit of fun. And uh, just, you know, weigh in. I want to hear your opinions. So with that, that'll do it for another day, guys. Links are in the description if you want to check out my other social media stuff. That's in there as well. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it or if you found this somewhat useful or informative. And be sure to come on back tomorrow. New episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day without fail. So I look forward to bringing you another one then. And I hope you have a fantastic night. I'll talk to you all tomorrow.